Hello everybody and welcome to another video in this Linux for Programmers tutorial series. In this video we're going to be talking about some common Linux text editors and just giving a really quick guide on how to actually use them. Now the two editors in particular I'm going to be talking about are Nano and Vim. These come by default with your Linux distribution or with Ubuntu if you're using this distribution. Then I will very quickly at the end of the video show you Emacs in case you care to use that one. I want to preface this by saying this is not going to be a ton of depth or detail on these editors. There is a lot to learn about these and literally hundreds of shortcuts that you could know or that you could use. So I'm just going to give you kind of the basics and enough to get by in these editors. Anyways, let's dive in after a quick word from Linode, which is a sponsor of this video and this series. Linode is one of the best platforms to use when hosting a service, app, domain, anything in the cloud, anything that runs on Linux, it will run on Linode. Linode Node is really a great platform for developers. They have a ton of integration with popular databases, with Kubernetes, with Docker, and just a ton of other things that you're going to be using quite commonly as a developer. So with that said, get $100 in free credit towards Linode by clicking the link in the description and signing up with a new account. Another reminder to make sure that you're signed up for the last five videos in this series. There will be another link in the description. You can sign up on this platform, register with your name and your email, and you will get notified when these videos are up and you will have access to them before everybody else. So with that said, let's dive in. So the first editor I'm going to show you how to use is personally my favorite and my preference when I'm using a Linux machine. And that's simply because this one is just really simple. It's super easy. And a lot of times all I need to do is copy or paste something or just write a few lines. And I find Nano is the easiest to do that in. Anyways, uh, to access Nano, you simply type Nano. We've seen this a few times before. You also can type the file name afterwards. So if the file currently exists, so let's just say, you know, test.txt, if this file currently existed in the directory that we were in, then it would open this file. If this file didn't exist, then it would create this file. So if I say Nano test.txt, we don't have a test.txt. It's actually creating this file for us. So now what I can do is I can start writing some stuff in this file. So as you've seen, we can just kind of type. We navigate using the arrow keys here and then a bunch of the common commands for nano are listed down below. So the ones that you really need to know, first of all, is paste, cut and copy, as well as write out and save. So if you hit control S, this will save the current file. Um, but if you want to save as so you want to save this as a different file name, then you would do control O. So whenever you see this little hat, uh, this usually just represents control. So I'm going to say control O and now notice it's going to ask me what file name that I want to write this out to. So you can think of control O or write out as kind of like a save as. Uh, so here, what I could do is, you know, change the file name or change the extension extension and then write it out. Of course, if I want to cancel, I can do control C. Now to look at all of the options and all of the keyboard shortcuts, you can do control G. And when you do this, uh, you can see that there is a ton of things. And again, you got to navigate here with the arrow keys to go through this. Uh, but you can display the help text, close the current buffer or exit from nano. That's control X, write the current buffer. And when it says buffer, it just means whatever's in the file here. Uh, insert another file into the current buffer. There's a ton of stuff that you can do. And again, I don't really want to go through a ton of this stuff, uh, but this is kind of the basics. Now I'm going to show you how you can actually copy and paste text because this is probably the most common thing you're going to do if you're using an editor like Nano. So to copy something in Nano, you actually have to figure out how to select it. Now, this is, in my opinion, harder to do and not very intuitive whatsoever. But to select some text that you would like to copy, you're going to use your cursor as well as a keyboard shortcut. So what you need to do is you need to mark a position. This is where you're going to start copying from. And then you will use the cursor to highlight an amount of text. So to mark the position, you're going to use the uh, the following shortcut. So control and then the hat or control and the number six. Now notice that there's a little hat where six is if you were to press shift. That's what it is in nano. It will say control plus hat. Um, but anyways, you get the idea. So control plus six or control plus hat. Then after that, you can use your cursor to select text. So you can see that this is kind of highlighting. And what will happen is that when you decide to cut or copy or do whatever you're doing with the selected portion, it's going to go up to and not including the cursor. So right now this will include the entire string hello. But if I move my cursor over the O, it's only going to include the first four letters. Same thing here. If I did it here, it would only uh, include the first three letters. So just make sure your cursor is placed after what you want to select or what you want to copy. 
uh, because obviously that's just how it works. So now when you want to copy something and also notice down here, it's saying mark set. So we're marking a portion. When you want to actually copy something, you use the following command. It's actually alt and then six again or alt and then hat. Now it's not going to do anything other than remove the current mark when you do that, but this will now be copied to your clipboard, at least in nano. So now if I want to paste this text, I can do control and then U, and it's going to paste it out. And of course I can paste it as many times as I want. Now there's a ton of other shortcuts as well. Again, I'm not going to go through all of them, but another common one is the cut command. So if you wanted to cut some text out, in fact, let's just cut these three hellos right here. You're going to place your mark. So you're going to do control and then six or control and then hat. You're going to select what it is that you want. So, so let's select all of this and then you're going to do control K. So control K and notice that cuts all of the text. I can move down here and then I can paste all of that in with control U. So that is cut, copy and paste on how you write out and save a file. Now, of course, there's some more things, but that's kind of all I want to show you for Nano. Just really wanted to give you the fundamentals so you understand how it works. Now to exit from Nano, you can first save. So control S or write out and then do control X. So control X will bring you out here. And now we'll start talking about BIM. Now, before we continue, I need to quickly thank the other sponsor of this video, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is one of the best platforms to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews, and I happen to be an instructor on the Algo Expert platform. At this point in time, I've created over 15 coding interview questions on Algo Expert. If you want to check them out, you should go to the link in the description and use the code Tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So to access Vim on your computer, what you're going to type is VI or on your Linux machine, sorry. Uh, VI stands for Vim, works very similarly to Nano. If you want to open Vim and create a new file with a certain name, you would say Vim and then let's just do test2.txt. And now this is opening a new file or creating a new file called test2.txt and you can start writing stuff in it. Now, the most confusing thing about Vim is that right now I actually can't type anything in this file. I'm, I'm in this file, right? And if I actually start just mashing keys on my keyboard, nothing's happening. Why isn't anything happening? Well, Vim is uh, something that a lot of people really like and something that a lot of people really hate. Uh, I'm kind of somewhere in between. I'm not a huge Vim fan, but I don't mind it. Anyways, Vim has two modes. So Vim has an insert mode and it has a command mode. So when you're in insert mode, you can actually modify the file, right? And when you're in command mode, you're typing specific commands that will, they, they could modify the file as well, uh, but they're not, you're not writing them into the file directly. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. But anyways, to get into insert mode in Vim, you type I. So notice when I hit I on my keyboard, it says insert at the bottom of my screen. Now to get from insert mode back to command mode, you hit escape. So now I'm back in command mode. And if I start typing, well, you know, nothing's showing up, but if I go, I am back in insert mode. And now you see, I can start typing stuff in this file. Now there is a ton of stuff to go through with Vim more than nano. Uh, so again, we're not going to go through all of it, but I'll just talk about some basic things. So first of all, let me show you how to quit Vim because this is the most frustrating thing ever. They do not make it very easy or intuitive whatsoever. You need to go into command mode. So if you want to escape this, you, you hit escape. And then what you do to quit is the following. If you would like to save your changes and quit, you type colon. Notice that's showing up at the bottom of my screen. Then W, Q, and then you hit enter. Now what this will do is save the current file and quit. So if I hit this, it's going to save uh, test two. Now, if I open this back up, hello is still in here. So now we are currently in command mode. That's the default mode you go into. If I want to quit, but I do not want to save, then what I do is colon Q exclamation point. Again, not intuitive whatsoever, but this will quit Vim without saving the file. When you do that, it's going to exit. Now, obviously we didn't make any changes, so we're, we still have the original file. Now let's talk about a few other things that you can do. So first of all, to navigate Vim, there's a ton of shortcuts, like so many different things you can do to go to the end of the line, go to the first word, remove the first word, delete the first word, all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you know how to use Vim, you can actually be really productive with just the keyboard and no mouse whatsoever. Anyways, that's definitely not me, but let's go through how to copy, paste and highlight. So if you want to start highlighting something in Vim, you go into command mode and you hit V. Now you're in visual mode and notice that you can start highlighting things in the file. So this is called visual mode in visual mode. There's a few other things that you can do. But anyways, here we are. I've highlighted the first word here. Hello. 
Now, what you can do uh, when you're highlighting is well, you can copy and you can paste. So if I want to copy this, I can hit Y. And now it says three lines yanked. And what that means is I have copied this text like yanking is the same thing as copying in Vim. So now I can navigate into the file where I want to paste this. And while I'm in command mode, I can hit P. When I do that, it's going to paste this wherever I have my cursor in the file. So that's how you copy, paste and highlight in Vim. Now, just to show you some of the cool things you can do with Vim, I will show you how to delete one word or one line at a time. So let's go into insert mode and let's type some more stuff. So we'll just go hello, hello, hello. You guys can see how creative I am with my uh, my words here. All right, so sorry, something messed up and I had to restart Vim. Anyways, we're back. Um, I'm just gonna show you a few other cool commands that you can use in Vim. This is not necessarily super useful, but just showing you kind of what you can do in Vim and the type of commands that they do have. Uh, so first of all, let's highlight some more stuff. So let me highlight this word here. Uh, so let's go in V mode. Now, while I'm in visual mode, if I want to delete the highlighted text, I hit D on the keyboard and notice all that's gone. I have deleted it. Now, there's a few other things that we can do. Uh, we can undo with the U command. So when I type U, that is how you undo. Uh, there is another one you can redo. So control plus R actually redo uh, redoes whatever change you had. I can now undo that. Again, I know this is a ton of things, not expecting you to remember them, just showing you the kind of shortcuts they have. Now, what else we can do is we can move forward one word, we can remove one word, uh, we can paste after the cursor, there's just, there's just so much. Uh, but I will show you how we can move forward one word because that one is somewhat useful, I guess. If you want to navigate like word by word, you can use W. So W will skip forward one word again when you're in command mode. And then to skip back one word, you hit B. Now, again, I don't know why they came up with these, um, but you know, you have B and you have W and that's how you can kind of navigate one word at a time through the file. I don't know why that's super useful, but there you go. Now, if you wanted to move to the beginning of the line, what you do is you hit zero. This will move you to the beginning of the line. Now, if you want to move to the end of the line, what you do is you hold shift and then you press four because you're trying to access the dollar sign. So this will move you to the end of whatever line you're currently on. And again, to go back to the beginning, you hit zero. Now, I could show you a ton more. I think I'm going to stop it there just because there's not really much more value in showing you these. You're going to have to look them up anyways. But now let's quit. So we'll do uh, colon WQ exclamation point to save. There we go. We close Vim. And that was kind of my quick run through on Vim. So now that we've gone through Vim and we've gone through Nano, I'm going to show you Emacs. A lot of people like Emacs. I don't really use Emacs, but I'll just show you how to install it on the machine. So to do this, you can do sudo. Uh, sorry, you actually don't need sudo if you're signed in as the root user. But if you're not signed in as the root user, you need sudo. Now, I don't know if I've discussed sudo, but sudo stands for super user do. And when you are in the sudo or as a group or you are a part of the sudo group, you have access to the sudo command. So if you don't have permission to do something, you just preface the command with sudo. And that means super user do. And then you're able to actually do that command. So I probably should have mentioned that. I apologize that it's this late in the series that I've talked about sudo because you use that all the time. But again, that stands for super user do and it will grant you permission to do something, assuming you are in the sudo group. Uh, and we talked about that in groups and uh, and users and all of that. OK, so now we will go to Emacs. So to install Emacs, you can do apt hyphen get install Emacs. Now, if you're not the root user, you're going to have to put sudo before that. And then this will run and install Emacs. Now, I already have Emacs installed here, but this will probably prompt you uh, with a yes or no answer. Like, would you like to use this additional space? Just type Y and then press enter and then wait a minute or two takes a few seconds and it will install Emacs. Now, to open Emacs, you simply type Emacs, right? And then it's going to open up something that looks like this. Now, that's literally all I'm going to show you for Emacs. Well, I'll show you how to close it as well. There's a ton of other commands for Emacs. Again, these uh, editors are really just up to your preference. You can use whatever you want. And there's a few other ones as well. I'm just showing kind of the more popular ones. But to exit Emacs, you'd use Control and then Z, and that will close Emacs. So there is a lot more to all of these editors. The idea behind this video is to give you an introduction, allow you to open the editor and close the editor, editor, which believe it or not, is one of the most commonly searched or asked questions. How do I get out of Vim or how do I get out of Nano or how do I close Emacs? And anyways, I hope that this video gave you a decent introduction and now you feel at least comfortable enough getting in these editors and doing some really basic things. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another one.